guys, welcome back to my channel. I feel like I've lost some time. Caribathon is currently underway, but I have lost my voice. <clears throat> so forgive me for this video, but I had to come on and try to make it because I'm going to try to make a video without speaking. Is that possible? No, it's not. So you know how last week there was this air quality control issue, air quality alert. Okay, so let me just say the thing without saying the thing around the thing. So, you know, there were these wildfires that were blazing up in Canada, and the smoke and the pollution was blowing to New York City, and the air quality here in New York City got terrible. Like, they say the air quality index should be below 50 or below 15. It doesn't matter. It hasn't been below 50 here for the past week. So last week, Tuesday I think it was, um, I first heard about the fires and the pollution and Wednesday was kind of terrible. There was a lot of smoke. And then Thursday was just like a complete, like we had to stay indoors all day. And Friday it was like dissipating a little bit, but I'm, like I'm waiting for fresh air. And Saturday and Sunday and it's now Monday and I have coughed so much my throat is hoarse so I feel like I need to put subtitles in this video um, because I have yeah, lost my voice the air quality is still hovering around 80 something and I just like kind of got tired of being inside the doors and the windows closed I hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay, let me try again. So, my daughter, she said, Mommy, your voice is so quiet. I apologize, but I'm going to try to make a short review. If, if you say you can't hear me very well, then I'll try to do another one later when my voice comes back. But I've, I've also shared some clips, some short videos, and some some photographs where I highlight this and write a little bit about my thoughts. So, Now Lila Knows by Elizabeth Nunes. I loved it. So it is by this author. She is from the Caribbean and the book was published by Akashic last year. Akashic Publishers was kind enough to send me a copy of the book last year and I intended to read it for Caribbean and I didn't and so I finally got around to it and I my only regret about reading this book is that I didn't read it sooner because there's a lot in this book that resonates with me. It is the story of a woman who comes to the United States from the Caribbean and it's like her her epiphany about race relations, about how she fits into the racial profile and the racial uh, hierarchy, the caste system. United States in the United States so the book is set in Vermont and we're reading about a woman who like I said comes from the Caribbean to Vermont she's been contracted as a visiting professor at a college in Vermont and so as a woman of color coming from outside of the American landscape and going into a white majority environment and she arrives just at the time when a racial incident happens or an incident happens that has a a lot of racial connotations depending on who is telling the story and so in this one we get a little bit of a discussion of the Black Lives Matter movement and the need for the activism but also how it weighs on other people who are not maybe necessarily directly involved with incidents but who see themselves see their connection with the victims see their connections with the perpetrators um, perhaps and just want to speak out to make sure that incidents like that one, the one, the fictional one that's described in this book, or any of the myriad of racial incident, any of the myriad of racial incidents that seem to have happened in the United States in the past few years, um, like just wanting to make sure that those things don't ever happen again, although they just seem to keep happening. So 
I really appreciated Elizabeth Nunes adding to that conversation by writing about the complexity of experiences of someone who was not necessarily raised in the United States, but who identifies with people of color here because other people see us as no different from African Americans. So Afro-Caribbeans are viewed in the same, through the same lens or viewed in the same way as African Americans, um, viewed in the same way as people who are of, people who are from Africa continent. It's like once you are a person of color, you're in the United States, everybody is considered to be homogenous, everybody's considered to be the same. And in this book we realize we realized a little bit about the, like I said, the complexity of that identity. And we see this main character uh, kind of struggling with how she sees herself, how the people, how the African Americans in the United States, in her, in that, in the community in which she has, um, the community in which she has now found herself, how they view her, kind of like as an outsider, as well as how the people of color that she is still in contact with in her homeland view her. So this one has a lot of that complexity of race and complexity of identity and I really really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed how Elizabeth Nunez ties the story of race relations to the bigger the bigger conversation about who owns a story, whether it is the person who writes down the story, the historian or the record keeper or the author or whether it is the person whose story, whose life story is being written about. So the participant, the, the person, the character, the person whose life is being written in this, in this work. And so she links this novel and the, she links the happenings within this novel to lots of literary works and um, discussions about literary works which I found really fascinating. So I made a list and so for what of not being able to express myself verbally here, I have a list of titles that are mentioned in this book, Now Lala Knows. And just in case you can't hear all the titles and I might not be able to put them on the screen, I'll put them in the description box. I'll put them in the description box down below. The list of 20 books or so that are mentioned in this short and sh pretty short novel. And let's play Have You Read That Book game. So here are the titles that are mentioned in Now Lala Knows by Elizabeth Nunes. So these are the titles. The Tempest, Shakespeare of course, Native Son by Richard Wright, I have read either of those. Notes of a Native Son by James Baldwin, I have also not read. Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, I have not read. Number five is Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin, which I have read. Number six place, She Wrote the Maid, but I think that is a typo. The Maid is by Nita Prose, which I haven't read. I have a copy of it from the publisher as I need to get to it. But I think the book that she actually meant to reference was The Hell by Catherine Socket, which I also have read, but I did watch the movie adaptation recently. Um, next is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, which I have read. The Iliad by Shakespeare, no, The Iliad by Homer, I haven't read. Omeros by, Omeros by Derek Walcott, which is Walcott's Iliad, I have read. Crick, Ma Crick Crack Monkey by Merle Hodge, I have not read. No, I haven't read it. <laughs> Next is the autobiography of Malcolm X as told to Alex Haley, which I have read. The book title specifically isn't mentioned, but in the book it's referenced in some way. Or Malcolm X is referenced in some way. And I had to put it on the list because Malcolm X's mother is from Grenada, the Caribbean. So I had to include the book. And I made a I made a short video which if you haven't yet watched it, I'll link it down below so you can go watch it. Um, next are two books by Franz Fanon, Black Skin, White Masks, and Wretched of the Earth. I have read Black Skin, White Masks, but not the other one. Next is a book called A Different Drummer by William Melvin Kelly. And that one is pretty instrumental and influential in this book because Elizabeth Nunes writes about that in her author's note at the back of the book. So... An interesting addition, an interesting um, inclusion in this book as well. Next is Hamlet by Shakespeare, which I have read. And then some titles by Toni Morrison, which I have read 
almost all of them. I read Beloved, The Bluest Eye, Sula. I haven't yet read Song of Solomon and I haven't yet read Tar Baby. So I think, you know, I think when I told you my score, I think I counted those. So let me tell you my score again. I've read Go Tell It on the Mountain. I've read Outliers. I've read Omeros, um Autobiography of Malcolm. X, Black Skin White Masks, Hamlet, Beloved, The Bluest Eye, and Sula. So I've read nine. My score is actually nine. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying Caribathon. I have a lot of other videos to make, but I think I'm going to wait until my voice comes back to make them. So thank you so much for watching this one. And until we come back for another video, go check out my Instagram, check out my YouTube shorts. I make non-speaking videos on other platforms. So until we come back, I hope you're enjoying Caribathon. And until we come back for another video, happy reading. Bye.